Hi everybody, welcome to another Spectrum Economics video. Today I'm going to be talking about complementary goods and substitute goods. So I've already covered off on demand. Uh, today I just want to look at the different types of goods and how they relate to each other. So what do I mean by complementary goods and substitute goods? Let's start with complementary goods. As you can see in the picture, we've got toast and we've also got jam. Jam and toast are considered complementary to each other. When you add jam to the toast, the toast tastes nicer than just on its own. Also, if the jam was on its own by itself, some people might like to eat jam out of a jar, but generally the jam doesn't taste as good either. So when you combine jam and toast together, you get something that adds more flavor, something that is more enjoyable. Therefore, they're considered complements. Also, when you look at it in terms of price and quantity. So when someone demands more of one, they'll end up demanding more of the other. So, for example, if the demand for toast increases, then the chances are the demand for jam will increase as well, because people will want more jam to go on the toast. Or should we say the demand for bread? The bread is actually turned into toast. Another example of complementary goods would be your DVDs, and your DVD player, and your television set. So the DVDs are complementary to the DVD player. The DVD player can't play anything other than DVDs. I think some might take VCDs, but let's just say VCDs don't exist anymore. So therefore, they're complementary to each other. We also have the television. The television is complementary to the DVD player. The television on its own can actually be used for various different things, but the uh, DVD player by itself really can't do anything. So as you can see, there's uh, a bit of a different relationship there. And also the DVDs and the DVD player, they're basically their perfect complements. You can't have one without the other. So you have a DVD and you have no DVD player. In effect, your DVDs are useless. That is also including DVD players that are built into computers, etc., etc. You'd have nowhere to play your DVDs. Whereas the television can be used for alternative things as well. You may be just watching your free-to-air TV programs. You will be watching cable, possibly. Or you could be watching things like Netflix and stuff like that. So they're not perfect complements, but they're still complementary to each other. And then you have DVDs to television. So they're indirectly complementary to each other because you watch the DVD on the television, but the DVD goes into the DVD player, which then connects to the television. Products such as DVDs and DVD players, and even televisions for that matter, can be mass produced. So if we see an increase in, for example, the demand for DVDs, you may actually see a fall in price, which is a little bit contrary to um, what is normally shown in economics, simply because you get economies of scale, because now you can mass produce DVDs and mass produce DVD players. So you'd see a fall in price instead of an increase in price with an increase in demand. Just a little bit of interesting information there. Let's move on to substitutes now. A very typical example of substitutes are butter and margarine. Butter and margarine perform very, very similar functions. Like for example, you can put butter on your bread, you can put it on your toast, you can put it in your croissant, you can use it for cooking. Similar with margarine, it has that same sort of function as well. So it's, you'd choose either to have margarine or you'd choose butter. You generally would not pick both margarine and butter at the same time. They generally don't mix particularly well. So there's very little value in terms of complementary to each other. So you use one or the other making them substitutes. They're not perfect substitutes because people would argue that butter tastes a little bit different from margarine. And some people are very, very much into butter and they wouldn't switch to margarine because of that taste. Also, margarine tends to be a little softer, it doesn't go as hard as butter, so it's a little bit easier to spread, so they will be in the camp that prefer margarine, so they may not switch to butter. But there's others that could go either or, and then be a little bit sensitive to price. So if you were to see the price in butter increase, for example, then people might switch to margarine. And the same thing, if the price of margarine goes up, people would then switch to butter. There are some goods that some people may consider complements and others may consider substitutes. A good example of that would be uh, jam and peanut butter. Some people would consider jam and peanut butter to be complements. I would personally think that they would be. I'd have jam and peanut butter on my toast together and I think it would taste very nice. I think peanut butter adds the flavor and I think jam does as well and having them together on peanut butter or on toast would actually be great. 
Other people, though, may pick either peanut butter or jam. So if there's peanut butter and jam there together, they will pick one or the other. So they would see them as substitutes to each other. So this makes things quite interesting, doesn't it? And it depends on what market you look at. Like in the American market, a lot of Americans like to have peanut butter and jelly, which is jam sandwiches. And therefore, they'd be considered reasonably good complements to each other. Whereas other people in other countries, so like England, for example, they don't generally put peanut butter and jam together. So for them, they will be considered as um, substitutes. There are also some goods that may appear to be obvious substitutes. Like take, for example, PlayStation and Xbox. Both of them are gaming consoles. Both of them you play somewhat similar games. And both of them uses the television. So a lot of similarities there. But some people do not necessarily find them to actually be good substitutes to each other. Like they uh, develop loyal fan bases. Like take, for example, you have your PlayStation. They have the PlayStation Network. And whereas the Xbox, I don't play Xbox, but I believe they have their own version of a network as well. They also have different controls. And that makes it a little bit of a learning curve. If you were to switch between PlayStation to go over to the Xbox, you'd have to use the different control and get used to the different buttons. There are also certain games that are exclusive to PlayStation and exclusive to Xbox. And some people are really into those particular games and they simply would not switch over to the Xbox or to the PlayStation because of that loyalty. So you have a situation now where you have got two goods that are um, substitutes to each other, but they're not particularly good substitutes because they've managed to differentiate themselves quite a bit, which is a little bit more than what you've got with butter and margarine, which are not quite so differentiated. So far, I've just looked at the application of substitutes and complements to goods and services, but we can actually take those concepts a little bit further. Like take, for example, you've got a football team. You don't want just all fast players on your team, and you also don't want all strong players on your team. You want a combination of fast and strong players because different players play different positions and different roles have different requirements. So you can see these players here. So if you've got big, off, you've got an offensive line, you need to have big, strong players for that particular role. But these big, strong players might not be any good as running backs or wide receivers, where you need to have faster players to actually fulfill that role. So you've got the big players and the fast players and the strong players. They all complement each other within the team themselves. This is a similar concept we talked about with goods and services, but we're applying it to a football team. You can also look at it in terms of the workplace. So you may hire some people that are very good in particular areas, like someone could be very good at mathematics, for example, and need their mathematical skills to solve particular problems, or very good analysts that can solve particular problems. And you may have other people that are very articulate, that can actually articulate things very, very clearly, and they'll be able to do the presentation side of it, even though they don't have some of the analytical skills, but they can take some of that analytical skills from the other person and you combine their presentation skills. And also maybe you have some people that are also very good at writing, have very good writing skills. So in a workplace you'll have a lot of different people with a lot of different skill sets and they all can complement each other. At the same time as well though, you can have people that substitute each other. So you can have several people that are good at one particular task, and if something happens to that person if they fall sick, that other person can move across and also do that task as well. And that's the same thing as well with sports. Like we go back to our analogy of the football players. You, you will have more than just your five starting offensive linemen. You'll have one or two reserve offensive linemen that also have the same sort of skill set. They're big and they're strong, and they can block. So you need a combination of substitutes and complements within different environments outside of just what we talked about with goods and services. This brings us to the end of our video for today. So we talked about complements, complementary goods, um, such as toast and jam. You add the jam to the toast to improve the flavour of the toast. Now we've looked at substitutes as well. We've looked at PlayStation and Xbox and how they how they are substitutes for one another, even though some may not consider them as close substitutes, but they perform a similar role, and you generally wouldn't want to own both at the same time. Some may argue there's a few additional games that the Xbox doesn't have that the PlayStation has, and vice versa, but the extra value of actually owning both is fairly limited. As you can see here in the final picture, you could look at traveling by car and traveling by metro 
as potential substitutes to each other. So if the price of train fares went down, the metro fares went down, people may switch to travelling by trains. Or, for example, if the prices went up, then people may switch to driving by car. Or if the cost of driving a car, for example, went down, fuel costs were lower, then you might want to drive in the car. Or if there's less congestion, you might want to take the car. So they're considered as substitutes in terms of forms of transportation. Again, some people will argue they're not close substitutes because there's some people that will not leave their car and they don't like the discomfort of the train. Some places the train doesn't go. Some people don't own cars, so they have to use the train. But if you catch what I mean, it is different perspectives and people see the degree of complementary and substitutionary just in a little bit of a different way. Anyway, thank you for um, what, listening to my video. Um, if you enjoyed this video, remember to click the like button. If you want to see more videos, um, subscribe. If you're watching this on DTube, remember to um, like and upvote and also follow me as well. So I've got a lot of other content here on Steemit that you can um, read, you can read my blogs and I've got other videos as well. Anyway, thank you for watching and you'll hear more from me.